Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today to learn more about the online graduate cybersecurity programs offered by St. Bonaventure University. We have a full presentation today, so we're going to go ahead and get started right away. Uh, before we jump in, here's a quick look at some housekeeping items. Uh, we just want to mention that we're in broadcast only mode. So that means that we, you can hear us, uh, but we can't hear you. So should you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We'll be sure to save time at the close of the presentation to address those. All right, our next slide, here's a quick look at our agenda. We'll be starting out with some welcome and introductions of everybody on the webinar. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about St. Bonaventure University and then the two graduate programs, the online Master of Science in Cybersecurity and the online Graduate Certificate in Cybersecurity. Uh, we'll feature some presentations from four of our accomplished faculty members. And then finally, we'll save room for Q&A at the end. So without further ado, here are uh, those of us on the webinar. I'm your moder moderator for today. My name is Katie Macaluso, and I'm joined by our admissions team, Marcos Baez and Elizabeth Comino, as well as our program director, Hossein, as well as our four faculty, four of our faculty members um, on this slide. So Javad Shamani, Mark O'Connell, Mikhail Sudikov, and Puya Gopi. Um, I'll leave more time for them to introduce themselves in just a little bit. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Elizabeth to share a little bit more about St. Bonaventure. Hi, everyone. Um, so to get us started, I um, just wanted to share a little bit about St. Bonaventure University. Like Katie said, um, we are a private, nonprofit Catholic Franciscan University. We were founded in 1858. Um, while the cyber program is 100% online, uh, we are very proud of the tradition that we have with our university located in Western New York. Uh, we are dedicated to academic excellence with our program. Um, we give a lot of personalized attention to our students. We want to prepare you to go out into your professional careers and lead uh, personal lives that are very valuable. We are ranked number one in New York State and number two in the North for the best regional university values by US News and World Report. Um, and we're also consistently ranked by the Princeton Review as one of the nation's best colleges. Uh, we are regionally accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. And then we'll share a little bit more with you about our cyber program. Hello, my name is Hussein Sarafzadeh, and I'm currently in New Zealand. I'm actually from New Zealand. It's, believe it or not, 7 a.m. in the morning uh, on Wednesday, actually. I'm a day ahead of you. Uh, I was hired out of New Zealand to lead the cybersecurity program at St. Bonaventure University in 2016. Uh, I have a PhD in computer science, actually specializing in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And I've applied those uh, to cybersecurity as a part of my research. Uh, so my specialization is machine learning and data mining for cybersecurity. I started New Zealand's first cybersecurity program in 2009. I created a cybersecurity research center in New Zealand. And ever since I've come to uh, St. Bonaventure University, uh, I've created this new master's program, a new certificate program, which I'll be talking to you about. I've uh, created uh, Western New York's uh, Cybersecurity Research Center in collaboration with National ICT Japan, Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity, and a number of local uh, companies. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the uh, cybersecurity program and its strength, I can name a couple of things first, and that's the Cybersecurity Center, which I mentioned. The Cybersecurity Center does research in uh, monitoring of uh, attacks on Western New York and analyzing those attacks. Uh, it does uh, machine learning, opinion mining, 
uh, data mining and various other projects that are in the center, uh, either funded by the university or externally. And uh, students uh, are allowed to use the data produced at the center and have access to the research in the center. We also have a security operations center and that sub security operations center allows students to work in the center while they study. Uh, we have partnerships with the EC Council and Cisco. This gives you free access to online materials and huge discounts up to 65% on a certification that is provided by the EC Council, such as the Ethical Hacker Certificate, which teaches you ethical hacking and pen testing and also a range of Cisco certificates. The program is 100% online. You have access to your professors uh, who are accomplished people in their fields. Uh, all of our faculty have industry certificates in their area of expertise. So they're hands-on people. They've had years of experience in the industry. Actually, one of them, uh, and he will tell you, he got his first cybersecurity certificate when he was uh, 14. So with all of that, I'm telling you that uh, the program is a solid program and it provides a range of topics which I'll be covering. We were ranked number 11 in the security degrees hub uh, in the country as a master of cybersecurity program. The online masters in the cybersecurity program is 30 to 33 credits. Uh, you can complete it in as few as 18 months. Each course is seven weeks long, so you can do one course at a time. And if you need a brush up on your networking, then we might recommend that you do a uh, networking for cybersecurity course prior to starting it to get you started in the networking basics and concepts that relate to cybersecurity. The program is designed for busy working professionals and we were getting a lot of uh, applications from people who were uh, police officers in the FBI and in various areas of the workforce who didn't have preparation for the master's program. So we've created a certificate program, a graduate certificate program, which I'll be talking about to get those who wanted to do the master's program but uh, didn't have the preparation into it. We were actually getting rejecting five applications out of every six that we were getting before the uh, certificate was designed and approved by the state of New York. So now if you don't have a degree in computer science or don't have the background for cybersecurity masters, our certificate program will give you that. Uh, we do real work coursework. We use cloud-based labs, which will allow you to do cybersecurity practice without damaging anything. And, and you do it like in, a, in the real world because our servers are, are there and, and they're virtualized so that you can uh, use them without um, any damage to the infrastructure. Now, one of the key things that makes our program stand out is the range of uh, topics that we provide in the uh, course. And that is we teach you offensive security, we teach you how to hack, but then we teach you how to defend defensive security. We also teach uh, enterprise security, which makes you employable in more advanced roles. We teach you cryptography, we teach you software security, in addition to all of that, we teach you machine learning and data mining, which are cutting edge areas that are applied to cybersecurity. Uh, 
this this makes our program really popular amongst the students and you can see the testimonial that uh, was taken from one of the students in the program we try to keep our students as happy as it is possible with the content and with the delivery The online graduate certificate in cybersecurity, like I said, is a bridging program that bridges people who lack the background, for example, in programming, in networking, and various other areas into cybersecurity. It's a standalone program because in that program, we teach you ethical hacking, pen testing, and various topics in cybersecurity in addition to programming as well as uh, networking and the basics of computing. So it, you could graduate with a graduate certificate in cybersecurity, but this graduate certificate not only allows you to go out to work, but it also prepares you for our master's program or basically uh, a master's in cybersecurity. And it's designed uh, for busy working professionals, although if you're a fresh graduate, you could also do this uh, and, and get into the field of uh, cybersecurity. So it's your key into cybersecurity advanced programs like the master. Now it's, it's time to start introducing our faculty members. This is Dr. Mohammad Javad Shamani. I got my bachelor from Iran University of Science and Technology in IT engineering. I got my master in information security from University of Tehran. And finally, I got my PhD from University of New South Wales in electrical engineering. I started my RT journey at the age of 14 and I got my MCP at the age of 15. Uh, from the age of 15 onward, I'm studying and working. So a couple of my positions before I had, like, I was a network technician and engineer. I started my journey with that one. Then network admin, network security designer. I was information security specialist for a couple of years. Cyber security specialist after my master. And then at the end of my PhD, I was cyber security researcher. Then right now I'm a trainer, consultant, and SME for a couple of uh, polytechnics, organizations, and San Bonaventure University. So my area of expertise are network forensic, incident handling, continuous monitoring, like analysis, and stock design. Right now for San Bonaventure University, I teach uh, 500, Sci 500, and Sci 501. In Sci 500, we what we do is just we prepare students for future units and courses. So uh, it's based on networking, but practical networking with security respective. So it's mostly hands-on experience and labs. And um, they try to troubleshoot by themselves with no help. But in Sci 501, it's about ethical hacking and penetration testing. So they try to understand the fundamental steps in these two category. Um, nothing else with me and just I'll pass it to Mike. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Javad. Hello to all who are interested in St. Bonaventure University cybersecurity program. My name is Mark O'Connell and I'm one of the adjuncts and in particular I teach enterprise networks. A little bit about me first. I have a 35 year career almost exclusively in IT related matters and specializing in InfoSec. For the first uh, eight years or so I was a US Air Force captain in charge of InfoSec on mainframes both at the SAC underground command post in Omaha and in various offices in the Pentagon. After that I was a consultant for Arthur Anderson and Company again on mainframe InfoSec. For those of you who are younger look up Arthur Anderson and Company that no longer exists. It's an interesting tale. After that, I was a tech services manager at Washington Metro Transit Authority, the people who run the trains and buses in Washington, D.C., where I was in charge of all PC LAN rollout, infosec, mainframes, networks, and databases. 
After that, for 19 years, I was a network engineer, change manager, and data center director for Verizon, the telephone company. And there are all manner of capacities related to network infrastructure, uh, change management, um, and uh, InfoSec. And for the last four years, I've been a consultant with a company known as Livingstone, where I consult uh, US-wide and even worldwide in software asset management as well as information security. And for at least 10 years, I've been an adjunct teacher at various colleges, teaching a small manner of InfoSec classes, in particular related to enterprise networks, but also security fundamentals, homeland security, firewalls, as well as business-related classes, including corporate finance, cost and price, and dozens and dozens more classes. I have both a BS and MS in computer science and an MBA from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you, either online or on campus, on St. Bonaventure University. And now I turn the discussion over to Michael. Take it away, Michael. Hello and welcome. My name is Mikhail Sudakov. I work full-time in the field for Leo Cybersecurity, which is a security company. I am cybersecurity architect and analyst. And if you're wondering what does that mean exactly, what do I do? Well, I, I do a little bit of everything. I am a developer of uh, security applications and software. I am a registered hacker and I uh, regularly conduct uh, penetration tests and uh, software uh, software hacks. I have a couple of offensive security designations. I am a threat hunter, I am a security analyst, I am a public speaker, I am a teacher, I am a, a pretty big gamer, and most importantly, I, um, I am human, um, right? So prior to joining Leo, I actually worked for St. Bonaventure University, and I was developing some applications, as well as doing some information security work for them. Uh, and also, in my final year of that, I was teaching um, undergraduate uh, course of uh, cryptology for the uh, bachelor's in computer science. And uh, before that, I, I also graduated from St. Bonaventure University, and I did my undergrad and then MBA in 2012. Uh, so for the cybersecurity program, I teach a course of applied cryptography. And uh, it's actually more of cryptology than just cryptography. Cryptology includes many fields, cryptography being only one of them. Some of the other important fields of cryptology are cryptanalysis and steganography. We will not be covering steganography all that much, if, uh, if at all. Now, as, if I, as I mentioned here, uh, there is a huge emphasis on cryptanalysis or breaking codes. In fact, you will be doing more of cryptanalysis, breaking codes, than you'll be doing cryptography or writing codes. Because I strongly believe in security by offense. And in order to truly understand how something works, you must take it apart. Um, so one of my favorite phrases is the phrase, I don't know, among others. I believe these are very empowering words. Never be afraid to say, I don't know, I don't understand, teach me. Uh, in the security field, we very much value that. Uh, your, your curiosity, your endless curiosity, your desire to learn. And the words I don't know are the very beginning of that. And these are just my, some of my personal beliefs, uh, just that's just me. Um, some agree, some disagree. I strongly, very strongly believe uh, in defense by offense. Now, I don't mean uh, uh, delivering the first punch. I mean testing your own defenses constantly, all the time. That's how you get better. You attack yourself. You see where you're weak. Never be afraid to admit your own weaknesses and work on them. I also believe that prevention, I put useless here in quotes because, well, it's not really useless. Uh, however, uh, it is evident that uh, in today's security field, uh, a lot of emphasis goes on prevention and prevention. And um, honestly, if somebody wants you bad enough, they're going to get you. That's why I said prevention is, I, I don't believe in prevention. It's detection and mitigation. They will get in. So. Uh, uh, spending too many resources on stopping them is um, it's not gonna it's not gonna bode well for you. Uh, detect as soon as possible and mitigate as soon as possible. Uh, I strongly believe that in order if you are to be able to protect well, you have to know how to attack because unless you know what your adversary is targeting and what they're going after and all their tactics and how they're going about their offensive, how are I how in the world are you will you be able to uh, detect detect and mitigate all those threats well, if you don't know what is coming at you. And finally, try harder. 
harder and harder, harder than you can believe. We very much value those people in this field that uh, exhibit this quality. Uh, never, never stop, always stay hungry, thirsty, always improve yourself, and you will do very well in this field. And next, I'll pass this over to Puya Rodby. Thank you, Mikhail. Hello, everyone. My name is Puya Gottby, and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. So I just want to give you a quick overview of my expertise uh, and experience in the security field. So I've been in the IT industry for around 20 years, out of which 10 years uh, I've been focused on security. And that includes different areas of security, including uh, software security, cloud security, network security, uh, penetration testing, um, identity and access management, and most recently, privilege access management or PaaS. Um, so most of my experience has been around design architecture and also implementation of uh, very complex uh, security systems, um, typically in tier one companies like banks, telcos, uh, especially in Australia, I've been involved in the four big banks in Australia and telcos. Uh, but sort of my career or have worked with the smaller companies and the smaller sort of industries as well so i've got sort of a, a wide range of expertise and um, experience in the field so I've, um, so currently i work as a solutions engineer uh, which is like a pre-sales role so uh, I'm, I'm involved in the uh, sales cycle technical sales um, for the company that i work in um, that is the number one leader in this uh, privileged access uh, management uh, industry called CyberArk. So in terms of my education, I've got a bachelor's degree in uh, software engineering and I've got a master's in computer science from RMIT University in Australia. Uh, and my teaching background has been quite extensive. Um, I used to be a sessional lecturer and also head tutor and tutor for more than around 15 courses um, around networking, security, software security, uh, and things similar to that. So also I'm, I'm a public speaker. Uh, I've run different courses around um, security um, here in uh, Australia. Uh, so the other thing I just wanted to touch on was my certifications, um, industry certifications. Um, I'm, I've got various certifications from Microsoft, Cisco, uh, Checkpoint, F5, FireEye, Splunk, uh, and a bunch of others. Um, so I just want to sort of quickly touch a little bit on the course that I teach, which is Secure Software Design. It's a um, sort of a unique course that we've designed uh, for Sam Ramancha University. Uh, so the course is around securing the software during the uh, software development life cycle. So we look at uh, the methods, techniques and procedures and principles that we can use to secure software and address all the vulnerability, uh, vulnerabilities um, at root. So before it actually gets out to production and before it is exposed. Uh, so naturally after that you've got penetration testing and other testing. Um, so we talk about a lot of uh, sort of quite up-to-date industry standards, industry tools that we use for security testing as well, like um, SAST, IAST, SCA tools and things like that. So if you're interested, please have a look at the course um, overview and see, see how you can benefit from this course. So um, I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll just pass it on to Hussein. Thank you. Thank you very much, Puya. It's Hussein again. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the application process. Very good. Yeah, I'll pass that over to Marcos. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marcos. I'm one of the advisors for the cybersecurity program here at St. Bonaventure. Uh, the admissions process for this program is, is pretty simplified. Uh, all that we ask is, you know, if you have an undergrad degree or bachelor's degree in a computer science related field, uh, that'll qualify you uh, to bypass our certification program. Now, if you don't have a relevant background, whether it be through your work experience or undergrad, 
you know, with our new certification program, you now also have a pathway into our master's program. Uh, with your undergrad, we do require a minimum GPA of 2.5, and you would also be required to provide us uh, with the police clearance. Uh, due, due to the sensitive nature of cybersecurity, you know, it's important there's nothing unethical in your background as it relates. And then also there's no GMAT or GRE requirement, uh, which can be the case with similar programs and also business-related programs. And that's an exam you'd have to take. Uh, so again, not a requirement with our program. Now, with all that being said, you know, we are currently accepting applications for our next session. Uh, our next deadline is coming up and classes do start at the end of August. Uh, once the presentation is over, hang tight. We will open the floor uh, for question and answers, as well as uh, you know an outline for admission if you decide you want to proceed. All right. So with that said, it is time for our Q&A session. Um, this is the chance that you can ask any questions you might have about the program. Um, to the side of the presentation slides is a box for submitting questions. We'll do our best to get through as many as we can today. Um, so let's, I'm going to go in right now, actually, and take a look at what questions we have. Um, our first question is, um, how long does this program take? What is, and what is the fastest I could complete it? Um, should I send this over to you, Marcos? Sure. So the program can be completed in as little as 18 months. Uh, now, keep in mind, if it's determined you need additional foundation courses, uh, it could stretch out the length of the program. Uh, but 18 months would be the minimum time needed to complete it. Okay, great. All right, our next question is, um, would you consider an information systems a comparable degree? I'll toss that over to you, Hossein. Yes. Uh, well, it depends on the courses that you've done in your program. If you've done programming and networking, then yes. Otherwise, you can do those, those two courses, or if you choose to do the certificate, two of the courses in the certificate program are transferable into the master's program. Actually, yeah, yeah. Two two of the courses are transferable, so you could either do the certificate or do courses from the certificate, depending on what courses you've done. So, if you've done programming and networking in your undergraduate uh, course, then yes, and it is a, an information systems course, then it is acceptable as a uh, bachelor's that qualifies for the master's. Okay, very good. Um, our next question is um, is asking if there is a graduation ceremony um, and a and a parchment. Um, I guess just kind of asking in general, you know, is is it sort of uh, the same as if you were sort of completing a degree on campus and participating in the graduation um, ceremonies. A uh, housing, can I ask for you for that one as well? I think it would probably be optional if they wanted to attend an on-campus graduation. So you would graduate with a degree from St. Bonaventure University, and as such, you're entitled to attend the graduation ceremony. However, because our students are from multiple states, and they're far away, some of them, like we have people from LA, San Francisco, Chicago, it would be very difficult to require them to attend the on-campus ceremony. It's not compulsory, but you could request to attend the ceremonies. Okay, terrific. Our next question is, would a basic level of Python programming be sufficient to start the program? I'll let Mikhail uh, answer that question, if you don't mind, Mikhail. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. I have just joined in and I did not see, uh, see the question. Uh, what was the question? Please repeat. The question is, is basic uh, Python programming sufficient uh, to do the master's program? 
Did you say Python? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. So for the last session of the course, Python was not included, but I am including it for uh, all the future sessions. So yes, if you kind of know your way around Python, the the overall requirements for the program uh, for the programs are not that great actually. So yeah, if you know your way around the programming language, Python included, you should have no issues uh, understanding that. Yeah, so the, the two, I mean, we, we teach uh, Python programming in our uh, certificate course, so Python would be very appropriate. But if you program in Java or any modern language, uh, that, that would uh, be sufficient. Okay, terrific. Um, our next question is, um, I have a, a BS and BA background um, along with military and law enforcement experience. Uh, do I need to do the certificate program first? Uh, the, the certificate, it depends actually on, on what courses you've done in your undergraduate program and what your undergraduate degree is in. However, we design the certificate program for specifically people in law enforcement, in the police force, in the military, who have had some experience with IT or security even, so that that program bridges them into the masters. So yes, I would recommend highly that you do the certificate because you get a an initial degree, uh, an initial graduate degree, and then you can move into the masters and part of the certificate will be counted towards your master. You uh, would benefit, I believe, uh, doing the certificate first and then getting into the master. However, we could, if you didn't want to do the certificate, we could look at uh, your background, your experience and all of that and advise as to what the best course is. So. Our recommendation is that you do the certificate. However, we could look at uh, things case by case. Okay, very good. Our next question asks, uh, what should I expect in terms of exams and other uh, homework assignments within the online courses? It varies from course to course. So I, I, I would like to ask Mikhail to talk about that uh, again, but there'll be quizzes, uh, hands-on experiences. Uh, for example, in the uh, certificate program, one of the courses is uh, teaches you about computer hardware, how it's set up. So we're gonna teach you how to assemble a computer in that course. If you haven't had any experience uh, with computing, uh, then, you know, in that course, one of the examinations will be to put together a computer from components and uh, we will help you get used uh, components at a very low price or if you have something at home that you don't want to use or you can go to uh, a store that sells computers and they might provide you with a used one free of charge and then you can take it apart and put it back uh, together. So that would be a type of exam. So practical exams plus uh, analyzing code and detecting problems within that code, uh, examinations. So it varies from professor to professor. So I'll ask Mikhail to add uh, whatever he does in his course. Uh, for the one I do in uh, uh, the cr cryptography course, uh, the emphasis is hugely on hands-on. Uh, there are there is a quiz every week. Uh, there is a final, which I'm actually strongly considering just dropping altogether. Uh, it basically all you will be doing is doing things. So yes, there will be a lot of uh, theoretical material, and I'll just check in, in quizzes each week to make sure that people are on the same page. But I would say 60 to 70 percent of your grade is just you're doing stuff. You are um, making things, breaking things. Uh, very little of um, first of all, in mine, there's no reading of outside material. Period. So there's no 
like I, I don't have you read a chapter and then do a quiz on it. It's all hands on. Okay, great. Well, thank you both for the detailed um, answers on that. Our next question asks, how long does it take to get a decision once you apply to the program? I'll maybe pass that to you, Marcos. Uh, you know, it's completely dependent on the student. Uh, again, there's documentation needed to complete an admissions file. Uh, generally, once we gather all documentation, uh, we should have a decision within a day or two once your file is able to be reviewed. Okay, so pretty fast. Very streamlined. Once everything's in. Okay, great. All right. Well, I think that is all of the questions that we have time for today. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us for today's presentation about the online graduate cybersecurity programs. We'll be sending out a recording to you once it's available um, so that you can um, view this in more detail later. Um, and I would encourage you to reach out um, to Marcos or Elizabeth for um, more information or to schedule an appointment to talk or to begin your application um, when you're ready to do so. Thank you so much for attending, and we hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you.